Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we have another ThinkPad. Now this ThinkPad is going to look rather unique because it has a plastic lid with no paint on it, which is one of the reasons why it kind of looks as beaten up as it does. But rest assured, this is still a ThinkPad. So this video is brought to you in cooperation by YTGuy2010, who donated this laptop to the channel. Thank you once again uh, for your support, because I would not be able to bring people this machine as easily without your help. So thank you very, very much. This is the L512. And as you can see, this will look very similar in a few ways to what was the R series, and it should. This actually replaced the R series. So this was produced from April of 2010 to October of 2011. It has no magnesium frame and replaces it with thick ABS plastic and a honeycomb construction. There would be a few compromises on this model that would include no think light included in the top bezel of the display. And we don't quite have a 180 degree hinge. So as you'll see here, that's as far as it goes. And the 180 degree hinge is kind of an iconic feature of ThinkPads if you're not familiar with it. And if you want more information about it, click this link up here to hear an interview I did with David Hill on that exact feature. So while we are looking at this device, there are a couple of key factors that make this an interesting unit. First off, we do have a 16 by 9, 15.6 inch display that came in two flavors, either a 1366 by 768 TFT panel or a 1600 by 900 panel. So there's no 1920 by 1080p uh, displays here. A few other things to note on this model is most of the optional features are included. A fingerprint reader is included, and this was an option, and the web camera up here is included, and that was also an option. Bluetooth was also an option that could be equipped on these devices. The L series is a bit unique in the sense of where it has some of its buttons and indicator lights that are on the left and right hand side of the machine. Even though you theoretically could put a numpad on a 15 inch ThinkPad, this one does not come equipped with it. In terms of other specifications, CPU-wise, you had either a Celeron, a Pentium, or Core i-series CPU. You had two variants of a Celeron, one Pentium offering, and then two i3s, I believe four i5s, and then one i7 variant. The GPU, of course, would be a Intel Graphics Media Accelerator HD, and some of these came with an ATI Mobility Radeon HD 5145, which was 512 megabytes of dedicated video memory. RAM was eight gigabytes maximum, DDR3 PC3 10600. So one of the neat things about some of these older ThinkPads is that along the left hand, right hand side here, you will see pictograms that tell you the key locations of several of the ports without looking at the side of the machine. Starting with the left hand side, we do have a headphone microphone combo jack. We do have a 34 millimeter express card slot. We have full size display port, Ethernet, and e U kind of like an e USB e SATA port there. We have VGA, and then we have the fan exhaust. Along the back, we have additional fan exhaust here for the CPU, Kensington lock slot, USB 2.0, always on. That's what that yellow means. Speaking of yellow, we do have our power plug over here. We do have a fixed ultra bay, which means that it is not hot swappable. You need to remove a screw in the bottom, and we'll see that later. And then we have two USB 2.0 ports. And then up here, we have a SD card slot with a spacer. We also have a manual Wi-Fi kill switch present. And then along the front, we just have indicator lights for sleep and charging over here. So as you can see, even though this is a budget series ThinkPad, it is still very much a ThinkPad in every sense of the word. And many people even today don't necessarily look at the modern L series, and I think that's actually a mistake. There are a lot of features that you see on modern L series that have kind of maintained uh, throughout, mainly their upgradability. 
And without further ado, let's go ahead and flip this thing over and take a look at that upgradability. I'm just going to go ahead and grab our handy screwdriver set and we'll flip this device over. So the first step is to remove the battery, which is easily done. We'll grab our screwdriver and a Phillips bit. And we will go ahead and remove the fixed alter bay first. So that's just a simple matter of spinning out this screw here. And it is a longer one. So we'll just put that off to the side. And then we can just pull this out. And that is standard SATA, so you should be able to get a hard drive caddy if you really, really wanted to and just stuff it in there. The next thing we will do is spin out this little screw here, which gives us access to a series of plugs and wires. Uh, what precisely they're for, I'm not entirely sure yet, but it is something that is uh, accessible. We'll go ahead and spin out this screw and we have uh, some covered components, uh, but again, nothing accessible, which is interesting. Well, let's continue. So we have a series of screws to spin out here, and even though it is a budget ThinkPad, thank goodness these are all captive. Yeah, this screw seems like it's in pretty rough shape, so... Let's see if this old trick works. And it does. So sometimes if you have a badly stripped Phillips, switching over to a small sized Torx works great. So that was a T5 and I was able to loosen that up, no problem. And then we should be able to pop this panel and that is very stiff so I'm just gonna give it a bit of a hand here all right so I just popped it up here and that seems to be helping a fair bit there we go holy smokes that was hard to get out but it was worth it look at all of these beautiful things that we have waiting for us on the inside so we have two RAM slots, and these are occupied with two gigabyte sticks each. So we'll just go ahead and remove those. Like so. And then we've got our hard drive caddy, which isn't screwed into place, but certainly could be if we really cared. And then we actually have a socketed CPU which is really cool and I'm not too terribly surprising. So if we do need a newer CPU, then this is actually a simple matter of removing these four screws. And hey, why not? Let's do that. So one, these are numbered by the way, for your convenience, two, and we'll unplug the fan. So we'll just lift that up. and walk that out and there's our combination CPU GPU and if I had to say YT guide 2010 uh, repasted that because it is gorgeous <laughs> and not dried out at all I would not anticipate that to be factory paste then of course to unlock we just turn that screw and we can reach in here remove the CPU upgrade it whatever else we ought to do. Now, to fully finish our disassembly, we do need to remove the keyboard. And the keyboard would be held in with screws where the pictograms are. This particular example appears to be missing uh, two of those screws. So this might be a case where the palm rest has to be removed before the keyboard will come out. And if that's the case, there's a series of screws here that we can remove along the bottom here and the sides. We've got a plastic card in here to help us out. And we're just going to remove that SD card tray because it's holding 
it in on that side. Okay, and when that comes up, we've got quite a cacophony of ribbon cables that we gotta watch out for. So we're gonna lean that forward. So we've got a ribbon cable, that's the Wi-Fi kill switch. We have, of course, the fingerprint reader, and then, of course, we have the trackpad. And then we've got the keyboard, the CMOS battery, and the Wi-Fi card. Now, this keyboard is interesting in the sense that it is actually held in with two screws here as well, just at the bottom edges of the spill tray. So to finish the removal of the keyboard, you're gonna have to spin those two screws out. So overall, I would say that this isn't exactly the easiest ThinkPad I have ever taken apart. Oh, there's the uh, Bluetooth card. Obviously, that still isn't that bad because you can actually service all of these components. All of these modules are removable, like this SD card slot, for example, is removable. Uh, and that's all really nice to see is that it's removable. So even though it's, again, not the easiest thing to open up, we can still get on the inside of this thing and do what we need to do. So I'm going to go through the arduous process of putting this back together, and then we'll turn it on and do some conclusions. All right, with everything back together, let's go ahead and open this up and turn it on. As you can see, we are in Windows. Uh, let's see if we can get that screen even just a little brighter. Much better. So as you can see, the L512 is obviously not going to be an extreme powerhouse, but it is capable of still running at the very least Windows 10. This particular example is the Core i5 M520, so not too shabby. As we saw in there, it is uh, four gigabytes of RAM, so we could double that up if we absolutely needed to, and if we wanted a faster CPU, it is socketed so we can put it inside. Overall, this is not a bad little computer. There are a few compromises in terms of how it's built, and the disassembly is not exactly as easy even as the R400 that it replaced. And if you want to see more about that, click right up there and you can see my video that I did on the R400 also thanks to YT Guy 2010. These things are obviously uh, very inexpensive and if you absolutely need a computer that will connect to the internet, run Windows 10, do light productivity work, then you could obviously make this work. It is not going to be the super fastest at anything, but if needs must and budgets are tight, the L512 can be had for a few hundred dollars at most and provide you with some good quality service. And knowing that it's a ThinkPad means that it will be durable, parts plentiful, and just the overall experience a positive one. If you do have any questions or stories about your time with the L512, or its little brother, the L412, I'd encourage you to put them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, then I would encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I get the opportunity to feature a ThinkPad or a laptop that you have sent in, then make sure that you are hitting those so you don't miss the next one. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.